On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. Dr. Seuss was born in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1904. When he was a young boy, his mother would chant rhymes to him. This, combined with enchanted walks through Springfield's National Park, inspired the young author to write a story about an elephant who courageously defects and defends and protects a speck of dust that is inhabited by a small society of people. Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again. Just a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, called Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked and he looked, but he could see nothing there, but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, said Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? I think there must be a very small person on that speck of dust. Some little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow into the pool. He has no way to steer. So I've just got to help him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, Horton stretched his great trunk through the air and grabbed that small speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Hump! Humped a voice towards a sour kangaroo, and the small kangaroo in her pouch said, Hump, too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that, there never has been. Believe me, said Horton. I hear you quite clearly, and my ears are quite keen. But there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, maybe four. Well, I think you're a fool, said the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too, and they plunged into the pool of the pool. What terrible splashing, thought Horton. I've got to protect these little people. Because, after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So he plucked up that clover and hustled away. Through the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Should I put this speck down? Thought Horton with alarm. I can't. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. I know. That might be too small to be seen, but a mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who, and we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. Don't worry, you're safe now. I won't let you down. <coughs> but just as he spoke, three big jolly monkeys climbed up Horton's neck and yelled, What rot! That elephant's talking to who's who or not. There aren't any who's and they don't have a mayor, and we're going to stop this nonsense. So there! And they jumped down and plucked away that clover and carried it far, far away to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vladikov. And before poor old Horton could even speak, that bird flew off with that flower in his beak. Oh, please don't hurt my little folks who have just as much right to live as us bigger folk do. But far, far away, the eagle kept flapping. And he called back over his shoulder, Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow where well, you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning, he did it. It sure was a terrible place where he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird. But I think you will fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, called Horton. I shall find it or bust. I shall find my small friends on my small speck of dust. So Horton picked, searched, and called. Are you there? Until he piled up 9,005. Until at last, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, found them on the three millionth flower. My friends, called Horton. Oh, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? Well, we really had trouble much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, our teapots are broken, our clocks have all stopped. So, Horton, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course I will stick, said Horton. I shall stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. Hump, humped a voice. Well, for almost two days you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who've never existed. So I'm here to state that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And as for your dust speck, huh, that we shall boil in this hot steaming kettle of basil nut oil. Boil it? Called Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. So the mayor quick called a Whoville Town meeting in Whoville Town Square. And the people cried out. They cried out in fear. We are here! And the elephant smiled. Why, that was clear as a bell. 
Surely you kangaroos heard that very well. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope, lasso his stomach with ten miles of rope. And the Wickersham brothers were too many for him. They mauled him, and they started to haul him into a cage, but he managed to yell. My ears are quite stronger than the kangaroos. They didn't hear you. Are you sure your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? So the mayor rushed through the town from the east to the west. But every small person seemed to be doing his best. But it wasn't enough, all this ruckus and roar. He had to find someone to help him make more. He raved through each building. He searched floor to floor. And just as he was about to give up in despair and felt he was getting nowhere, that mayor burst through a door. And there he found one very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing, bouncing a yo-yo. Not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. So the mayor rushed inside and grabbed the young twerp and climbed with him up the Eiffelberg Tower. This is your town's darkest hour. We've got to make noises in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed, and when he reached the top, the young lad cleared his throat and shouted out, <coughs> Yop! And that yop, that one small extra yop, put it over. Finally, from down on that dust bag, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean, and the elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They proved they are persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. <laughs>